this here is the story of one Thomas Warui aka Thomas Ogagula, Kenya's a rich kid who turned into a dreaded and most revered gangster, abandoning his comfortable life at its parents' place at Langata and moving to Kayole in Nairobi's Eastlands. Thomas Warui aka Thomas Ogagula was born on 28th August 1992. He came from a prominent and a well-known family. His grandfather was a member of parliament and an assistant minister. His uncle an attorney general. Thomas's parents resided in Langata and worked tirelessly to ensure that their kids get the best. His parents took him to the best schools in town, hoping that one day he would follow after his grandfather and become a leader. True to their words, he became a leader, but not one that they could expect. Tomaso went to the prominent pioneer school in Maragua but dropped out in form 2. After dropping out of school, Tomaso shifted to Kayole, abandoning the comfort of his parents' home at Langata. At Kayole, he rented a single room and began associating with thugs. Later, he became one. Those were the dark days in Nairobi and especially Kayole, which was the hiding den of Nairobi's most wanted gangsters. Tomaso became a thug and was loved by many. His charisma made him a darling of the people, especially hot Nairobi babes. While working as a thug, he started associating with the founder of Mauki family, whom we only knew by his nickname Akevo Lumide. Tomaso was a lover of good life. He ended his days chewing mira. At the time, mira was expensive and only a few people would afford it. Tomaso used to party his weekends away at popular Nairobi joints. He had a preference of going to reggae clubs in company of his friends and beautiful ladies. This partying habit led to the birth of Team Chafua Meza with Tomaso as its leader. His favorite drinks were Black Label and Johnny Walker. Things however started changing when a certain matatu was hijacked. One of the passengers narrated that the suspect, a certain tot, was among the kajakas. Do you wish to know who he was? Of course, it was Tomaso. Tomaso was immediately put on police radar. Drones were mounted to monitor all his movements, day and night. He worked daytime as a tot, but a thug at night. Their target was raiding big shops, kidnapping and kajakings. Whenever the drones were mounted, the miscreants were notified by the informers, and for such reasons, Agagula and his team continued to terrorize Nairobi residents. Though the sleuths were 100% sure that Agagula was a criminal, they couldn't take any action because there was no substantial evidences against him. Team Chafua Meza continued with their party non-stop Monday to Friday every weekend. They thought they owned Nairobi. They even started partying at Kagina's Boroboro because they knew they were untouchable. They expanded their boundaries and they would raid businesses outside Nairobi. One night, they attempted to raid a certain petrol station within Kangundo Road, but they didn't manage because drones were within. The following day, Sleuths paid a visit to Njoroge and Joka, Chacha's parents, and requested them to take their son out of Nairobi before it's too late. Those were the days when officers used to give prayer to criminals. After Thomas had been notified that the sleuths were at his parents' place and they have given some directive that must be followed, he started posting nasty things on his Facebook account. In one of the posts, he wrote, and I quote, "You only have one life. You live it to the fullest, and not knowing what happens tomorrow." End of quote. He then attached a photo of him holding a black label, Mzinga. If wishes are horses, beggars would ride. He wrote in another post with a picture of bottle of Johnny Walker, double black whisky, and a cup of beers, surrounded by beautiful ladies. The miscreants continued with the operation, outsmarting the officers, who kept a keen eye on their movements. It was not until when they shot and killed a police officer within Langata and disappeared mysteriously when the police declared war on Team Chafua Meza. On August 
2014, he went for his last mission in South Sea. They ambushed a resident who was waiting for his gate to open and kajaked him. They later drove off towards Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, where they threw him off the car. Luckily, he was unarmed and went ahead to report. Two days later, a plainclothes officer received an unexpected lead. The stolen vehicle with three occupants was seen parked at Boruburu Shopping Centre at 11.30 p.m. The officers waited to pounds and when the occupants left the vehicle to go to an ATM while surveying the surrounding, the sleuths identified one at Thomas Ogagula. On seeing the potential danger, the two other suspects fled the scene leaving one Thomas Ogagula behind. Tommaso was sprayed with 13 bullets and that was the end of his life. He died at the young age of 22 years. He was buried at Langata Cemetery after his father declined burying him on his land and even attending his funeral. That is the life of one Thomas Warui aka Thomas Ogagula, a child born in riches but abandoned all the privileges to lead a risky life of terror and crime. Do not forget to subscribe, like and turn on the notification bell for more interesting stories.